Alrighty guys, we are on the last section of chapter 11. So, uh, let's take a look. Oh, what, what even is the section? Congruence and transformations. Um, oops. Jeez. So we're looking at whether shapes are congruent today. And congruent, if you remember, is uh, the geometry word for uh, basically equal. And so we are looking for when shapes are considered equal. Two geometric figures are congruent if and only if there is a rigid motion, so that is one movement, or a composition of rigid motions. Uh, composition means we're putting things together, composing things. Um, so the first one is there's one rigid motion or, if, or more than one rigid motions that maps one of the figures onto the other. So if we look here, we see this shape, uh, you know, you could consider that a rotation or maybe there's a way we could reflect it. Um, but these are all the same shape. They're just in different orientation, like they're positioned differently, but the dimensions are the same and, and uh, everything else. Versus uh, these are not congruent. Uh, these have different sizes and shapes. Um, so yeah. Identifying congruent figures. Identify any congruent figures uh, in the coordinate plane. Explain. So um, this is like really obviously like, oh, if I take A, B, C, D and translate it down to the left, uh, you know, it is uh, N, P, Q, R. Um, so yeah. Uh, how about here? We have going up two, going up two, and going over three, going over three. Okay, so this is this could uh, be a reflection, um, and the reason why, like, it asks you uh, to explain, but later on in the this is like the first example, so it's the easiest one, right? Um, but here it says STU is a 180 degree rotation of HIJ. So you'd say, oh, I would rotate this 180 degrees um, to go from here to there. Um, but since like rotations are kind of hard to play around with in a like quote unquote like quick manner, then you'll see that um, rotations can also be replaced by uh, reflections. So, for instance, if I took this um, and I reflected it across the y-axis over here, and then I reflected it across the x-axis again, or not again, but if I reflected it across the y-axis and then the x-axis, um, that would give me uh, the same result. Or, if it does not give you the same result, but it gets it in the same orientation, you could combine like rotations and uh, translations. Or sorry, reflections and, and translations. Um, identify any congruent figures in the coordinate plane. Explain. Uh, so this is just another example. So here, uh, more obvious, like, you know, oh, reflect, right? Or, oh, translate up. This one's a little bit trickier. Because the orientation, uh, you know, if you ask me off the top, like, it looks like it's a rotation. Um... So we could be like, oh, hmm, how to explain this like spatial awareness stuff? Uh, we go up one and over two, so we go over one and down two. So ED is looking like the uh, same side as BA. Um, from D to F, one, two, three is looking the same as A to C, so one, two, three. And then uh, F to E is over two and up two. And we have uh, over two and up two. So yeah, this looks like some sort of rotation. Um, and then you would go to like, try the rotation rules to be like, oh, is this a 90 degree, 180 degree, or 270? It looks pretty close. So I would imagine this is a, a 90 degree. And maybe even we involve some, uh, oh. Yeah, I was gonna say it might involve some translation, but it probably doesn't actually. Um, another name for a rigid motion, so rigid is when things are, a rigid means like hard, right, or non-moving. Um, so another name for rigid motion or a combination of rigid motions is a congruence transformation because the 
pre-image and image are congruent. So when we describe these things, um, we're basically using the tools we use in the past three lessons, which is translation, uh, reflection, and rotation. So here, uh, a possible solution is to reflect it one once over the y-axis, and then reflect it again over the uh, x-axis. Um, or sorry, no, we don't want to do that, because if we reflect it again, then the shape, like it will be upside down in this case. So actually, uh, we could just reflect it over the y-axis and then translate it down one, two, three, four, down four, that's it. Yeah. Um, so here, again, just another example. Um, here, reflections in parallel lines theorem. So if, a is the image of A. Actually, I don't know. Do I, is that prime prime? I forget. Um, but this, you know, the fact that you have two parentheses means you did, it was like the result of two actions. Um, and this one has no parentheses, which means the pre-image. So it means you did something to A twice to get here. And in this picture, what did we do twice? Twice. We did... Uh, Reflection twice. We reflect it over this line and then we reflect it over a parallel line. So when you reflect When you reflect any shape over a line and then another line that is parallel to it all you've done is Translated it you've moved it, but it's in the exact same orientation when you reflect it one time You know here. It's the orientation is uh, going down from left to right here. It's going up from left to right but once you've reflected it twice, oh, look, you're going down again. That's the exact same orientation. Um, yeah, so the relationship is that uh, if you connect the pre-image to the, uh, or a point on the pre-image to its point in the image after you've reflected it twice, it creates a right angle with the lines that you reflected with. And not only that, the length of the whole thing is twice the distance uh, between the two lines because first the distance between two lines is like there and then this chunk and this segment combined add up to form uh, this because this right here directly ties to this distance and this segment right here directly ties to this distance um, we don't really have to worry about that because uh, the problems I'm assigning are are everything else, like translate, like combining the uh, rigid motion uh, transformations. So um, I've done one of these, like we talked about it. Let's talk about uh, this. So. We want to make it so that uh, PQR goes to STU. So I'm looking, it's because P is supposed to map on an S, um, if you play around with a rotation, it will get you there in less steps. But if that is like just beyond you or rotations are not your strong point, or you just like have a tough time visualizing it, then you could also think about this in terms of um, reflections. So if you reflect it in the y-axis, then it would be over here. And then if you reflect it in the x-axis, then we would get it so that P has gone from being the top of the shape over here um, to the bottom of the shape once I have reflected it on the x-axis, and then you could translate it. So for this problem, you could reflect, reflect, and translate, or you could cut all that out and uh, do a rotation, and you just have to figure out, oh, like, is it moving a lot? Is it moving a little? Because that will, you know, inform you on whether you choose to pick a 90-degree rotation, 180-degree rotation, and a 270-degree rotation. Um, Describe a congruence transformation that maps polygon A, B, C, D to E, F, G, H. So A, B, like that's the first two letters, right? 
is going to map onto EF. So AB and EF, well, if this is on the right side and this is on the left side of the shape and I want them to match up, then the only, uh, I, like, you might consider a rotation, uh, uh, you, it, it is possible you would consider a rotation, um, but just in this one, like, if A is first and E is first, then I want them to be in the same position, which means that I want A to be in the bottom left, right? And so if I rotate this thing, uh, A will be, end up being at the top. So what I'm going to do is I will reflect this along the y-axis. So that I've taken this whole thing and reflected it over here. So B is going to be somewhere around here. A is going to be somewhere like there. And then I'll uh, translate it. So I would reflect in the y-axis or across the y-axis and then translate. Um, determine whether the polygons of the given vertices are congruent. Use trans So this 4 and 5 are the exact same problem as this, except you have to draw it out. Um, so like here, 7, 8, 9, and 10, it's the same idea as 5 and 6, but you have to draw it out. Um, and then describe a congruence transformation that maps the blue, blue pre-image to the green image. So if we're looking at it, just read it carefully. It's saying, oh, what do I do to the blue one to make it the green one? And uh, that's it, your guys' assignment today is only one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then I tacked on one problem in the next page, nine problems. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know.